Hello, everyone. I'm Nancy Netzer, the inaugural Robert L. and Judith T. Winston Director of the McMullen Museum and Professor of Art History in the Department of Art, Art History and Film at Boston College. I welcome all of you. You are a large group tuning in from different time zones around the world. Today's lecture forms part of the graduate undergraduate seminar I'm now teaching on the Museum of Arts, History, Philosophies and Practices from the Classical Period to the present. And I'm joined here on the panel by Rachel Chamberlain, the, Mu the McMullen Museum's Manager of Educational Outreach, whom I would like to thank for organizing this program, and by Professor of Renaissance and Baroque Art at Boston College, Stephanie Leone. Today, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce a distinguished scholar, curator, and museum director. Dr. Barbara Yatta. Born in Rome, where she's lived most of her life, Dr. Yatta received her degrees in art history, archive administration, and literature at the Sapienza University of Rome. Since 1994, she's taught at the University of Naples in her area of specialization, the history of graphic arts. In the 1980s and early 1990s, she cataloged the entire collection of drawings and prints in the Italian National Institute for Graphic Design. From 1996 to 2016, she was first the curator and then the director of the cabinet of prints at the Vatican Apostolic Library, where she organized many important exhibitions. After having served briefly as vice director, Pope Francis appointed her the director of the Vatican Museums in 2016. During this year, marking the 500th anniversary of Raphael, Dr. Giatto will speak to us today on Raphael in the Vatican. Her lecture will last about 50 minutes and then we'll take questions. If you have a question, please write it by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And now I invite you to join me in welcoming Dr. Yatta to her Zoom microphone and to share her screen. Welcome to everybody. And I, I'm very happy to be with you even if in this uh, digital form. I really thank you, Professor Nestor and Professor Leone and uh, Rachel to to organize this uh, this webinar. Uh, we are since March uh, used to these kinds of webinars, but I uh, I'm always feeling a little confused because the the direct uh, um, impact with the visit, with the audience is is uh, something that we we are used to. Um, Today I would like to talk about Raphael and the Vatican, but specifically what uh, web preview has uh, the great celebrations uh, in the Vatican museums of uh, a figure like Raphael, and what he has been done uh, uh, by 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 today, and what is preview for for uh, the next future. Um, wait, wait, wait! I tried to share. Hopefully it's fine. Share. Okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. I try. Okay. It looks good on our end. Okay. Um, probably all of you knows that Raphael is one of the major uh, artist and uh, I'm always uh, talking and not only me but uh, art historians knows that you cannot know Raphael without coming to the Vatican Museums because the Vatican Museums preserves uh, probably the most consistent um, uh, wall paintings of fresco paintings by, by the artist but also so many other 
other um, works of art by, by the, the Divino Raffaello. And this is, is evident since the starting of, uh, of uh, the visit uh, to the Vatican Museum, to the museums of the Pope. Uh, this is the, the door entrance uh, of the Vatican Museums uh, open in 1930s when when finally the museums were open to any kind of public uh, uh, from Italy to to the Vatican City State and uh, one of the two figures the major figures uh, uh, that are uh, behind uh, the 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 Pope um, coat of arm Pius XI the Pope uh, that uh, wanted. Uh, this share of the Vatican collections is, uh, is Raphael. The other one, of course, is Michelangelo. But Raphael, uh, since uh, even the ticket of the Vatican Museums has the icon image of, uh, of uh, the School of Athens, Platon uh, and uh, Aristoteles, uh, that uh, are really the first image that you receive when you enter in the Vatican Museum. Uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, the, um, Raphael stays in Rome uh, uh, and was almost all devoted to, to the Vatican patronage. Uh, um, between 1506 and to 1520, uh, uh, Raphael worked uh, for uh, two major uh, popes, uh, Julius II de la Rovere and Leo X Medici. In a time when probably the art in a wide sense, not only the visual art, but art uh, um, in terms of, uh, of um, poetry, literature, music, uh, the, the, court, the papal court really receives a, a time uh, in, in which uh, um, is really in, in, the, in, the, in the different era, the, the kind of, um, uh, of court of the uh, and the kind of uh, high quality of the cultural um, vivacity of, of this time is uh, is uh, un, uh, un, it, we we cannot really find in any other other time uh, of the of the um, papacy in the in in the centuries uh, a time of this uh, uh, two papacy and. Uh, of the Raphael timing in, in, in Rome. This is a time of, of the new uh, construction of the, um, of the Basilica of St. Peter's. So the, the Constantinian Basilica was destroyed and the new Basilica uh, was started uh, thanks to Donato Bramante, but thanks to Julius II that by the way, is important to remember is uh, the, Nef uh, the, the nephew of, uh, of uh, Sistus IV, uh, the great Pope of the Sistine Chapel and of many, many other collections. This morning I was uh, uh, in the Cap Campidoglio, in the Capitan uh, Musei Capitolini uh, of the city of Rome, and the first uh, nucleus of collections in, in, the, in the Musei Capitolini, uh, so the, the, the uh, the city, the city collection of uh, uh, and the city museum is thanks to Sistus IV. The first nucleus of uh, of um, uh, of the collections of the Vatican collections is due not only to Sistus IV because of, of the Sistine Chapel, but thanks to Julius II and his collections of uh, of uh, uh, ancient uh, statues, Greek and Roman statues that he wanted to have uh, in the on the top of uh, the um, um, Mons Vaticano, of the Sant'Egidio uh, Hill, uh, that is in, in that wonderful space, uh, the so-called Belvedere Vaticano, where, as you can see in this uh, beautiful paintings by Van Cleve, um, he, he, he was located uh, in, in a sort of garden of statues uh, that was linked to the Papal Palace uh, thanks to a Bramante wing uh, that, uh, as you can see in the image, all the papal court was passing and, and as a sort of promenade from the palace to, to the collections. Uh, of course, one of the masterpieces is uh, the group of the Lacon that uh, was found in 1506 on a vineyard in, 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 in Rome and immediately Julius II went send Michelangelo and Sangallo to, uh, to, 
to see this uh, this uh, discovery, and uh, they immediately recognized that it was the so important group of uh, uh, of the Lacon um, uh, described by Plinius the the elder in the Historia Naturalis, and immediately was put into the garden in the Belvedere collections. Um, what have done Raphael for the Vatican? This is uh, this uh, this slides uh, in some ways is uh, is a summary of what he has done. Uh, Raphael, uh, the apartment of Julius II and Leo X. He, he was called uh, for um, depicting and and making frescoes and 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 the design uh, of uh, the iconographical program of the apartment of Julius II that didn't want to uh, to leave and uh, and act and, uh, and and in the apartment of his predecessor Alexander the sixth uh, Borgia because they were really the he, that is below the actual Raphael uh, rooms or apartment of Julius the second and Leo the tenth uh, the signatura room uh, as you can see was was uh, designed and, uh, and and painted between 1506 to 1518 uh, then the Eleodora room then the Incendio room and then the Constantine room from 1519 but uh, ongoing and then it was left unfinished uh, when when Raphael suddenly died at the age of 37 years old then, uh, thanks to Leo X, uh, the incredible tapestry of, for the Sistine Chapel, then it was, uh, um, it was uh, received uh, during the pontificate of Leo X, the, uh, the nomination of architect of the Basilica of St. Peter's after the death of Bramante. And then uh, it was, thanks to Leo X, um, uh, received the appointment of a curator of antiquities in, in Rome. So a very important role uh, related to the, all the excavations that were, uh, were by that moment in Rome and even of the preservation of the antiquity and, and to, to be sure that the, the spread of the antiquities from, from the city of Rome was, was uh, in some ways controlled then the Vatican Loggia, then the apartment of Cardinal Bibiana or the, and the, the, the stove and the loggia. So this is, uh, of course, uh, as you can see, and as you know, the, the very famous school uh, of Athens in the Segnatura room, uh, still the Segnatura room for, uh, with the um, Disputa di Sacramento and the Parnassus, the Eliodoro room, the Incendio fire room, and the Constantine room. The lodge of the Cardinal Bibiana in in the in the palace uh, and the stove of the Cardinal Bibiana is always in the palace. The lodge, the second lodge, uh, was was due to Raphael and it, his very his collaborators uh, um, in in a time uh, started with with uh, Raphael. Um, and then uh, ended by by his pupils and uh, and and collaborators and the tapestry uh, to complete uh, Leo X uh, uh, wanted him to in some ways uh, complete this uh, visual catechesis of uh, of um, the Sistine Chapel um, adding an important passage of of uh, uh, of the of the Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles. And he, in, uh, in 1515, decided to, uh, to use the, the media and the, the expression, the most uh, uh, delicate and most uh, uh, cultivated media and, work, uh, and art uh, of the time, of the, uh, of the court, uh, of European court of the time that are the tapestry. We must think that, uh, mm, uh, the basilica was uh, was uh, was a, a mass was uh, under construction, and the really the Cappella Magna, the, the Sistine Chapel, the Cappella Magna of the Papal Palace was the only place where it, it was all the celebrations were were going on, the major celebration of uh, 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 by that time, uh, not only the conclaves but also the major celebrations, and so it was very difficult to to uh, 
to have uh, another another workshop, another uh, cantiere in, in the Sistine Chapel. And the idea of commissioning to Raphael uh, the tapestry of the Acts of the Apostles, or, so the gospel to, to people, the, uh, the lives of St. Peter and St. Paul and, uh, and other apostles, but uh, um, commissioning uh, him um, cartoons for, for the tapestry and having the tapestry done in, in the Flanders, in the most important workshop of tapestry by Peter Van Els in Brussels was really the good choice. And uh, what, uh, what um, uh, the um, uh, papal uh, ceremony, uh, ceremonier, il ceremoniere papale Paris de Gracis uh, is telling us that by uh, when, when the first seven tapestry arrived, uh, in 1519, on, on the 26th of December of 1519, the entire court, the presence of the Pope with the Raphael there, the entire court was so astonished, was so incredibly impressed by, by the beauty of the Sistine Chapel uh, with all, all the frescoes and uh, add by, by the tapis that uh, ad unanime giudizio uh, was uh, to uh, the uh, with the opinion of every everybody nothing so beautiful as I've never seen before. Uh, niente di così bello era stato mai visto prima. So that, that these are the words by Paris de Grassis. But Raphael, as I mentioned, was also nominated uh, architect of of the basilica uh, at Bramante's death, and uh, he was the one who, who was nominated curator of antiquities. And the very famous um, letter uh, uh, to uh, written in, in four hands uh, by Baldassar Castiglione and Raphael to Leo the Tenth is our symbol and our, uh, in some way, starting of. Um, the idea of preservation, the idea of, idea of conservation, the idea of tutela, of uh, care of uh, antiquities and care of, of uh, the um, uh, culture in a, in a wide sense. So really, uh, um, uh, Raphael in some ways is seen also as a model and as a model that was followed uh, thanks to this nomination and thanks to what he has written uh, for the preservation and for the care of arts in, in, in the next centuries, 500 year centuries. But Raphael is not only the papal uh, commission in the Vatican, we have um, other very important uh, works of art uh, uh, arriving uh, in the Vatican in, in the next years, in the next centuries uh, that are considered and are part of really a uh, 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 fundamental knowledge of Raphael art. Uh, and they, mm, they arrived, uh, and not thanks to, to a papal commission, but thanks to uh, Napoleon Bonaparte during Napoleon time. Uh, and these are St. Peter's and St. Paul, arrived in 1718, uh, the Odi altarpiece, uh, uh, that was uh, uh, made arrived uh, in 1816 after after uh, Napoleon defeated the Madonna di Foligno also arrived in the same time the Transfiguration arrived in the same time and the Baglioni altarpiece Predella uh, and Predella arrived in 1816. All these uh, works of art, all these paintings, were not conceived or uh, commissioned by uh, uh, a papal or uh, um, uh, um, uh, a people they are not related to that, but they are real, arrived in 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 different places. Um, the Peters and St. Paul, the Fra Bartolomeo and Raphael, um, commissioned for for the Church of San Silvestro Quirinale, both by the Church in 1718. The or the altarpiece uh, uh, made for the um, uh, chapel of the Odi in Perugia in 1502 or 1503 is very Peruginesque. So it's uh, it's uh, really a, an incredible example of uh, of Raphael young uh, and, and youth uh, uh, per Peruginesque time uh, when he was in Perugia and in Città di Castello and uh, 
than in Florence, but really the the, the Perugianesque style is very strong. And so, it, but then the Poligno Madonna coming from uh, a convent in Poligno, where where like the the Odi and the Transfigurazione was taken by the troupe and the very sophisticated uh, uh, um, consultant by Napoleon to to be. Uh, to be in uh, in uh, the Museo Universal del Louvre, then uh, um, and the transfiguration from San Pietro Montoro was also taken by the Napoleon troupe and and emissaries and brought to 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 Paris. Uh, thanks to Canova, the, all these paintings were uh, got back, but not they didn't go back to to Perugia, didn't go back to to Foligno, didn't go back to San Pietro Montoro, but came to the Vatican, with an idea of sharing and uh, of uh, uh, sharing and uh, cultivate the uh, the people uh, th uh, with the universal works of art, they were already recognized as universal works of art. And the idea after the Museo Universel in Paris, the idea of sharing the beauty and the universal. Uh, images uh, of Raphael in a, in, a, in a more stable way was the, the idea of uh, not only of Pius VII, the, the restored uh, rest, uh, restore Pope after the, the time of uh, the French time, but also the restoration of, of the great art of, of Raphael and, uh, and the Baglioni altarpiece, sorry, of the predella, uh, the predella of uh, the Baglioni of the Galleria Borghese is uh, has uh, com was coming from uh, from Perugia, then went to Paris and does the same the same story. Uh, uh, as uh, as Nancy has uh, as um, has said at the beginning of this uh, this uh, lecture, uh, arriving. Four and a half years ago, to the Vatican museums, I thought uh, the time of 2020 was a, was an important time to to celebrate uh, um, a 500 year anniversary, an important 500 year anniversary. And so uh, we I, we put together a, a number of uh, of uh, ideas together with my colleagues uh, to how celebrate uh, in in uh, in the best way this uh, anniversary of, of Raphael so we we had uh, ideas of uh, organizing exhibitions and editorial projects uh, an, an international symposium in of Raphael in the Vatican with all the the results of uh, more than 25 years of restorations uh, projects and of uh, uh, not only restoration projects on analyzes and 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 the studies uh, on Raphael works of art in the Vatican, but even external collaboration to Raphael celebration. So all all what uh, in in the world uh, in a wide sense was uh, organizing, and of course people and institutions were coming to the Vatican Museum to organize uh, these, um, and and the restoration of the Sancio year. Um, First of all, we made this logo. is a logo of, of the uh, celebration of Raphael in in, um, uh, in in the Vatican, 1520-2020. This is uh, all our initiatives have have this logo, and these are the exhibition projects that we have. Uh, uh, think uh, we have thought that some of them started already hopefully now now we can say hopefully in uh, in October 2019 uh, um, just uh, to to be already uh, in uh, ready in um, when 2020 was started the the plates of Casal Gandolfo then the the Chambri altarpiece um, in February and then the presentation of the tapestry and then you you will see Unfortunately, we start we we before the lockdown and before the pandemia, we we were able to 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 do the the first three projects, and the rest has as you will see, um, some of them we we already have done, some of them already we won't do it, and some already they are postponed in two thousand twenty one. So this is. Uh, this is uh, unfortunately the the situation in in which we we are. 
that we are living in, but uh, the entire world is living in this incredible situation and we, with energy and with, uh, I don't know how to say that in English, with caparbieta, we want to, we really want to, to keep going, uh, uh, coronavirus, coronavirus and pandemia apart. In October of last year, we started this uh, incredible collection of, of, um, of um, Renaissance dishes uh, uh, coming from this uh, incredible uh, ambiente between, between uh, Umbria, Tuscany and Urbino. Uh, they are wonderful and have most of them uh, uh, Raphael iconography and uh, they were restored and uh, we thought uh, has they stayed in in a long time in uh, Cancel Gandolfo in our in uh, in the papal uh, summer residence that since uh, three four years is uh, is uh, run for for uh, for the um, uh, as a as a museum uh, because the Pope Francis decided not to live uh, uh, in in the summertime there anymore so he he said that he wanted to share with our uh, pilgrims and visitors and so we. We are like uh, like the Vatican Museums are part of the of the organization uh, to turn this uh, uh, summer residence uh, papal uh, place into a museum uh, for for visitors. And so we thought that to to organize uh, this exhibition uh, where where some of the iconography on on Raphael on the Antico and on Raphael is um, is uh, really evident, and they are beautiful beautiful works of art the second the second uh, celebration we started in in uh, february the 7th was uh, devoted to the master of uh, raphael uh, perugino we have thanks to napoleon also this altarpiece uh, uh, that is preserved in room number seven of the painting gallery the altarpiece uh, uh, commissioned to Perugino, we like to think uh, on, on a late Perugino, we like to think on, on by the time uh, Raphael was in his workshop uh, in, uh, in Raphael youth uh, and um, uh, and he was preserved in and was commissioned by the De Cembri, so the the um, elder uh, consultant of the of the um, city of Perugia for for the chapel in the Palazzo uh, de Priori in Perugia, so the Palazzo of the Government of, of the city of Perugia. Uh, the, the, uh, the painting was taken by Napoleon Troop, like, like the others, like we already mentioned in the Vatican, and then brought to, to Paris. And when he, he got back from Paris, he didn't go back to Perugia, but uh, went back to to our uh, to our museum, uh, not to our museum, but to the collections, and then uh, now is is in room number eight. We we thought it was nice uh, to share, and we had a joint program with uh, Perugia, so we brought back to Perugia that own uh, the frame, the beautiful frame by by Cecco di Bastone, and. Uh, uh, and uh, the Cimasa, the beautiful Cimasa with, uh, with the Pietà of Christ uh, on the top, uh, that were, uh, were separate since the time of Napoleon. So in Perugia, from October to January, we, we, we had uh, this exhibition that then was uh, taken to our museum in February with the idea of reconstruct uh, the, the, entire, uh, the entire composition. And we are very happy because the Cimasa got back to Perugia, but the frame has his own frame and was unused in Perugia. They, the minister decided, the minister of culture of Italy and decided to leave at least for eight years and maybe for a long term long loan uh, to our museums, uh, the, the wonderful frame by Cecco di Bastone. So this is uh, a, a very nice uh, uh, um, situation. Uh, between, uh, the 17th of February to, to the end of that week, we, we had decided to, after a 10 years project of restoration of, of the tapestry of the old school in uh, uh, Conceive, as I mentioned, of, for the Sistine Chapel, to hang them as they were in this uh, incredible uh, mass on the 26th of December of 1519. 
but there were also in other celebrations, but mm, in during the uh, 16th century and few others in 16th century to hang them in the Sistine Chapel. And so we did, and we, uh, we had uh, an incredible job to do it with our restorers uh, and uh, um, we, we really had a, a long day in hanging them using the, uh, the hooks of, uh, uh, that are still there in the Sistine Chapel that we use for, for this purpose for, for centuries and um, the incredible and beautiful tapestry uh, sewed in, uh, in silk, silver and gold uh, uh, was uh, where, where Ang in only for one week to the beauty and as Paris de Grassis uh, uh, in Cerimoniere Papale said uh, in 1519, nothing so beautiful I've never seen. And it was an event we didn't expect so many people and we decided not to do it in, in December because December during the Christmas, uh, the Christmas uh, time is a, is a very crowded time for the Vatican Museum. We decided to do it in February, uh, but uh, it was an incredible event. Uh, we had mm, thousands and thousands of visitors. This is like it was looking uh, I show you some some other pictures, but you can see in our website uh, 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 um, a video and a, a, a footage of uh, what uh, what we have done. You are very welcome to visit our website and all these uh, events and celebrations where it is uh, in a, in a more in a more deeply way presented to to our our visitors. Um, the tapestry um, received uh, uh, an incredible study by our um, former curator of, of tapestries, and um, finally, he, he, the, this uh, two two volumes uh, uh, and solid uh, study by um, uh, by the curator. Um, was uh, was issued, but we wanted to present it by the time of the tapestry, but it wasn't really ready, all the copies, and then the lockdown arrived, and we are now thinking wh when or how we can present this incredible two volumes, uh, uh, two volume studies um, by, by Professor De Strobel that really passed her, all her life studying, studying the tapestries. Uh, the annual agenda devoted uh, that generated the Vatican Museums, uh, of course, this year is devoted to Raphael also. And these are all the external collaborations uh, to other Raphaelesque celebrations, uh, there were, but uh, specifically in, um, uh, in, um, in Italy, but uh, we have, as you can see, even the Boston uh, exhibition of Raphael and Tomas and Girami, where we send an, a, a tiny painting uh, from our collections in, in the Museo, Museo Lateranense, uh, and other, and other uh, collaboration uh, with Vittorio Albert Museum and the National Gallery of London that uh, were preview some other, uh, some other, um, uh, exhibitions and other other events, but uh, all of them have been postponed. So uh, lockdown arrived. We were closed for for three almost three months. It was a, a very tough time. I can tell you, uh, we are now uh, hopefully not going to another lockdown. By the moment I I, I spoke to you, but. Uh, one of the happiest day was the 1st of June when we decided to reopen the museum to the public. It reopened only uh, with an online uh, reservation uh, with the use of the mask uh, that is, uh, um, we, uh, all our visitor has to wear, wear a mask, but also has to pass a, a thermal scanner. So the security is, um, we are we are uh, sa safe, but we we cannot have all the incredible numbers that we used to have before. The lines uh, in uh, in the Vatican walls uh, in Italy uh, to enter our museums uh, is not existent anymore. We must uh, the maximum of our visitors per day is uh, 
around uh, 7,000. So we have this lots of uh, uh, a certain number every every half hour, uh, which in a way is the, is the time to come to to visit the Vatican museums because uh, you don't have anymore the, the some tropic <laughs> incredible uh, number of people that we, we used to have, but uh, uh, but. Um, but uh, it's uh, on another side is it's, it's sad because we know the, the reason why we don't have so many so many visitors but this is a, a problem that is shared with all our colleagues of major museums in in the world and i must say that uh, we 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 try to to look in in a positive way we like we try to to be to be happy uh, with the visitors that are coming and all the people that are coming, most uh, Italians, most Romans and Italians and, and few Europeans um, of our visitors are so happy and the feedbacks of, uh, of the visitors are so, so, so incredible that um, I, I, I am happy anyway for, for that reason. Um, uh, the first of June, we also decided to open uh, in with two other major projects that were previewed. One is the, the new installation of room number eight, the new room devoted to Raphael in the painting gallery, which uh, uh, which uh, uh, has the three major paintings as a, a, a of, of Raphael and the tapestry. Uh, the, the major paintings that were in uh, Napoleon uh, Museo Universel. This is a, a watercolor depicting them uh, when they were uh, uh, for the Napoleon wedding uh, to Maria Luisa d'Austria in the Grand Galerie of the Louvre. They were having some uh, frames uh, that uh, uh, were not there anymore. We found in a deposit two years ago, the frames uh, that were used in up to uh, uh, 19th century and then were taken off and uh, we decided to restore these frames uh, and uh, and put in uh, with a new lightening of the entire room uh, in, in the room number eight uh, devoted to Raphael. So this and, and all the visitors that are coming, all our colleagues that are coming are very, very happy and, and I personally am very satisfied of the result because really uh, the painting gallery that of course has masterpieces like uh, Giotto and Melozzo and um, other major uh, even of the Baroque art but really is is Raphael centric because the Raphael rooms has the most important and most uh, uh, large uh, space uh, devoted to her and uh, this is it. This is the room, uh, a picture depicting the room before uh, the framing and the, before the incredible lightning that we we have de decided with our uh, official conservatore with the Osram company. But uh, really, is uh, is um, we are very happy, and we open that on the first of June when we reopen. This is a study. Of, um, before and after it, with a very sophisticated enlightening. But by for the Anosanto, we, we also restore the um, uh, coronation of the Virgin Mary of the Audi altar, uh, altarpiece uh, with a cleaning of it. Uh, and so that we are very, very happy and uh, with the result. Uh, by, by the restoration of the Sancio here, we also uh, worked on the Bramante courtyard, uh, not only on the pine cone, but also on the entire work, uh, on the entire structure and building. We are not. We are now uh, uh, unveiling uh, in these days uh, the unveiling the third wing. Uh, we already have done the the Nicione, and we we will hopefully finish. Uh, of course, we couldn't. We were not able to finish all of it, but we will finished but hopefully by 2021. And this is thanks to our um, American uh, patrons of the arts in the Vatican Museum that really supported not only the, uh, the uh, lightning of, of, the, uh, of the room number eight, uh, not only the, the Audi uh, Palace uh, uh, altarpiece uh, of the 
uh, altarpiece, but also the Bramante courtyard. This is the pine cone that we just unveiled last uh, last week. So, but what probably the most uh, important uh, project that we unveiled the first of June is um, uh, the end of uh, an incredible project that is uh, started uh, in 1980, as you can see from the slide, uh, with the incendio room. So uh, the stanze they were started from the first uh, in terms of, not in terms of when it were, they were painted by Raphael, but when, when uh, in, in, um, in physical order, the incendio is the one, the first one that uh, appears when you come from from the galleries and uh, it was restored in 1980s to 1994. And then the Segnatura room with, the, with a lot of our restorers, internal restorers. And the, here you can find all the names of uh, the restorers and, and the head of restorations department that worked uh, strongly and uh, in, with, uh, with the competence and with, with professionality. In, in, in these incredible frescoes in, in the 90s and then in the, the um, uh, from uh, year 2002 and 2012 on the Eliodoro room. And then from 2014 to 2021, probably we will finish, uh, we, we are working that. And as you can see, I, we will pass the images in of the Incendio room of the signatura and the cleaning and the work and the analysis, uh, they were very, very useful for Raphael studies. And so really for more than 30 years, we were in the center of the studies of Raphael, uh, not only of restoration, but all the results coming from the way of, uh, of Raphael himself and the workshops. Uh, um, uh, thanks to all the analysis and all the studies made, uh, thanks to these incredible uh, projects of uh, long-term restorations of the Stanze. This is the Signatura, of course, the School of Athens, the Parnassus, beautiful, the Disputa de Holy, Holy Sacrament, the Room of Eliodoro, incredible liberation of St. Peter's, or this uh, La Cacciata di Odoro dal Tempio. Incredible portrait by him. Uh, we know very well how, how incredible he was in, in portraiting. Bolsena Mass. And then Incontro. And then uh, we, we, the last one was, was the uh, Constantine room that we were eager to finish the entire room by 2020 for, for the occasion of this uh, International Symposium preview on the 6th of April 2020, the date uh, uh, that um, biographers, Vasari uh, and others, uh, thinks that he's the, his birthday uh, and his death day. So he was born in death, uh, <laughs> uh, according to them, uh, Il Venerdì Santo, dell'Aprile uh, of 15, uh, of 1520, uh, and he died on the same day. We don't know if it's Venerdì Santo or the 6th of April, 15, uh, 15 uh, um, uh, sorry, 1583, 1520. And we were eager to do and to present this incredible uh, work. This is uh, pictures before the restoration, as you uh, you can see it's it's uh, dirty and with um, with shadows and with um, dust. And time by time we started to clean the incredible room, uh, the the most large room uh, that is called a hall instead of room or Constantine room or Constantine hall, uh, where the um, uh, that it was has be because of his larger. Um, side was uh, was considered the the most lay uh, and and consistorial uh, room uh, uh, used by by Leo X uh, for for his meetings and his uh, little events and and um, uh, and 
we must think of a, of a, of a palace and of a court uh, before the major construction of the papal palace uh, of Sistus V uh, and, uh, and before the great, uh, the great palace uh, of the Quirinal. Uh, so really, really uh, this was the place of, uh, of the con of, of Concistorio and the idea of, of Leo X and thanks to Raphael, the display of the entire project uh, of uh, depicting them uh, uh, as a political and very, very sophisticated idea of depicting on uh, fake tapestry. And here we, we go back to this incredible medium, but fake mm, tapestry uh, painting uh, in, uh, on the walls uh, of, the, of the life of Constantine, uh, the first great emperor, that passed from pagan sea to the Christianity uh, is a really a, a very important message to 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 the people that the people received, and uh, and the depiction of uh, not only Alocutio, so the vision of the cross, uh, the battle of Constantine uh, in the name of the cross, and the winning through uh, uh, on Masentius. Uh, uh, and and the and the bad tips, uh, uh, that are coming uh, is coming of, of him after after the winning of the battle and this passage between between the pagan sea and uh, Constantine that is seen uh, as a as a trespassing from the power uh, of uh, of uh, Roman Empire to little by little thanks to the Donazione di Costantino. Uh, to the power of the of the papacy, uh, we ha we have found incredible and wonderful uh, colors uh, that uh, we know that they were commissioned in 1519 uh, to Raphael that conceived the entire uh, conception. Some of of the group of the drawings uh, for uh, and cartoons uh, are um, of Raphael, uh, are, and there is a, a school of thought that. All the um, uh, all the, the entire conception was made by him, and uh, and his pupils were executors. What this incredible um, restoration project that I followed uh, uh, very closely in these uh, last years uh, really uh, revealed that Raphael took part of in in a specific way on two on two specific uh, in, on, on the entire conception of the iconographical program but on, on two figures specifically these were uh, previewed to be to be unveiled the, the restoration project to take off the scaffolding by by april but they were done in june the first uh, with this incredible uh, new new life of this uh, the Battle of Constantine, and specifically, uh, this is uh, the Alocutio, uh, and with many, many results that we will give in in the next year, um, in the next year symposium, uh, the Justitia uh, that you can see before and after the restoration is um, is for sure. Uh, um, uh, probably last uh, Raphael before his sudden death on 6th of April to uh, 1520, when after a few days of a high fever, he, he left his wor this, this word, uh, um, leaving the, the court, the Leo X court, uh, astonished, uh, totally, totally uh, in, uh, mute by, by the the departure of, uh, of an incredible artist that was, uh, was not only an incredible uh, draftman, an incredible painter, uh, an incredible um, and uh, court and sensitive man that could dialogue with Pope cardinals and, uh, and, um, and poets and, and men of, of, uh, of philosophers but also an, an incredible uh, um, experiment man. And these are the two figures that are uh, uh, stating of what uh, the, the ancient documents and Fonti are telling us. Uh, uh, we realize by, by the restoration that are 
by the hand of Raphael, they were sort of probed by the master that uh, uh, are done in, um, in a specific technique that is olio su muro and not a, a real fresco. Uh, we know by the Fonti that uh, his pupils after his death, uh, um, Giulio Romano and Giovanni Francesco Peni tried to use uh, the same technique, but the, the, like, like for, for Leonardo in Palazzo Vecchio, the, the walls were, were down, uh, went down, and so the, all the rest uh, of the, the, um, the walls are in ottimo fresco, uh, as you can see from uh, the images. And these uh, there were the only two figures left because they were well done by the great experimentatore and executor that was Raphael, and uh, uh, were, were preserved. Uh, and they were the first uh, to be done, and this we, we recognize by the Giannate, and uh, we will, but we will share all the details in the next year symposium together with the, uh, an exhibition of uh, the restoration of these uh, two incredible and huge paintings by the patrons of, uh, of Rome, St. Peter's and St. Paul, that are now preserved in the papal apartment and they are, uh, and it's an idea of that the Holy Father uh, that were were only exposed. I saw them in 1983 for the uh, exhibition of Raphael in Vaticano. Nobody have seen in in the white public have seen since then. And so we were uh, able to we want we wanted to expose uh, in October of this year. So this uh, in in a few days. But uh, of course the COVID. Uh, uh, did not permit us to work and to restore them, and so we will do that hopefully next uh, next uh, April. This will be the symposium that was supposed to be in uh, next April, and now is previewed for May, for the beginning of May 2021. And um, and uh, uh, this is it. I don't know how much time I had it. Oh, 50 minutes. Sorry, <laughs> I'm probably have been too long, but. Uh, but this um, this is exactly what we uh, we we want to. Um, I wanted to you to share uh, what is the situation right now. Sorry, Nancy, I was a little too long. <laughs> no, not at all. We we're really delighted, Barbara. Thank you so much. And we do have some questions. Um, if you have a little bit of time, there. Sure, in the sure. In the queue, they're in the chat here. Um, one of the questions comes from one of our patrons and he was interested um, really in, in, um, in the chemistry uh, that you might have revealed in, um, during, the, during the restoration process of um, the composition of Raphael's paints and whether he mixed his own paints and what the differences might be between the paints that he used for um, the frescoes and those that he used in paintings? Um, he, he was using a wonderful uh, fresco, of course, in, in all the School of Athens and other, and Eliodoro, so the pigments were wonderful pigments, and uh, in, but as uh, we must think of a Raphael that was uh, conceiving in by the time of the uh, of uh, the Constantine room was uh, uh, already having the um, many many duties uh, he was working in the Farnesina he was working in Villa Madama he was architect of the Fabrica he was a com commissario l'antichità so he was really too too busy to to be on the works uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like it was in the previous years, and um, but he was uh, an open-minded. He really wanted to experiment, it. and this is the reason why the these two figures has a, a different technique. And the analysis we have done in internal analysis testified that the these two figures are the only figures. As you can see, they are so beautiful. Look at the look at the justitia has the skin like the wonderful and incredible uh, portrait uh, by Raphael. Of course, the, if you go back to this in, nice and beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, fresco of the Constantine, we, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate, but it's nothing compared. And if you come to see 
the, the justitia, justitia and the comitas, uh, you immediately see after the cleaning more and more that are uh, made in a different technique that was testified by all the all the analysis that we have done. That's wonderful. And are you publishing the analysis? Uh, yes, we already did it, but we were we really wanted to publish them in into our symposium act. Uh, the symposium act have been postponed, so we 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 um we will. Oh, that's wonderful. We have another question here about the two popes, um, Julius II and Leo X. And do we have any documentation of the um, of the directions that they gave for those commissions? Oh, of course, there are. There is plenty of documents that testify the importance uh, and the um, the presence of Julius II on on the commissioning of uh, the Stanza della Segnatura and uh, uh, specifically that was uh, his library, his personal library and, uh, and, and all the artists really around him really, uh, really uh, they are specific and not, not, only the, um, uh, not only the biographers, Vasari and others, but also documents in in uh, in the Vatican archives that, that testify, uh, I was composed the library and uh, and uh, and the entire aspetta, and the entire uh, conception of of the school of segnatura and and then also for for the other rooms. So uh, of course there are some of them have been already published, of course, but uh, but we always uh, work in this way the, in the Vatican. We of course, we are lucky because we are the archives uh, that are still l'archivio uh, anche dei sacri palazzi is in the secret archive. And now, now we call apostolic archive because Pope Francis has changed his name. But uh, we uh, we worked uh, studying before all the documents, not only the, the ancient documents, but also documents that of uh, the the restoration projects undertaking or all what happened. Uh, in the spaces and in the on the frescoes in during the centuries, and so we start. Uh, this is our method of working, and we start from the analysis of the documents, and then thanks to the documents, we we can really well act in terms of restoration. Wonderful, thank you. And then we have another question here about. Um, you told us a lot about the amount of time it took to restore these works. Um, how did you finance that? Because that's a, that was just a huge project. Allora, I sh I'll show back the, um, the slide. Uh, 1980, 2021. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a huge time. It's almost a, a generation, more than a generation of restorers because uh, Enrico Guidi uh, unfortunately already died. Uh, Claudio Rossi de Gasperi is, is still, uh, of course, is, is, in, um, is, in, is retired. And even uh, uh, Gianluigi Colalucci, the great restorer of the Sistine Chapel, is, is still living. Uh, we, we have consulted him uh, and he came uh, on a wheelchair to see our restoration project in the past months and the past years. Um, and he's uh, 87 years old, and uh, but really, uh, really for us uh, and for other projects we are undertaking, his his opinion is uh, is so important, and so we are so happy and and um, and thanks for to him because he he approved exactly uh, our method. That is, of course, is his method <laughs> of cleaning and <laughs> of acting. Of course, we have much more um, kind of analysis than in 1980s. Uh, we are much more supported in this in this uh, way. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, I'm always saying that uh, uh, apart from coronavirus, I'm a happy and a lucky director because it's uh, it's a huge, huge staff and a very competent staff, and uh, and uh, really we can we can so well work inside uh, with uh, with professional uh, high high quality professional uh, staff. That uh, uh, I'm a lucky person and director. And then I had a question myself. 
myself. Um, mm -hmm. I was really happy to see that you showed that wonderful uh, Benjamin Zeke's painting okay. of a watercolor of Napoleon uh -huh. and Maria Luisa um, yes. being married in the Grand Gallery. And we talked about this, uh, you know, in the class. And um, so I, I can't believe, so I, I didn't realize, I guess, that Napoleon reframed all these paintings. That he I see. And That's so a, he sent them back with the frames that he put on them? Hey, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, for sure, uh, the Transfiguration, because we worked very, very strongly also with the archive in terms of that. And for the Transfiguration, we found that the frame was uh, commissioned uh, next novel uh, in 19, in 1830s. So when, after, after his arrival back, but the, the, the Madonna of the Foligno, the, um, uh, La Madonna di Foligno was uh, re-golden, re in 1923. So that, that's the documents we have in possession. So uh, when, when incredibly I was in a deposit in Santa Maria di Galera, which is a, a place where we have deposits of objects and, and things, I found a, an enormous case on which it was written on uh, Cornici di Raffaello, Raphael frames, I said, oh, please, let's open them. <laughs> this was two years ago. I, was, I had in mind Raphael and, and I said, uh, let's go and open. And the next week, uh, the restorers went, went there and, and found the, the Cornici, uh, the, the, the frames, but they were in, they were, and so we, for two years, we restored them. Uh, because uh, the, the 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 room was was like that without frames because they were they were taking off uh, uh, but they were not taking off those frames they were taking off uh, ugly frames put in 1930s uh, wood and very heavy uh, neo rinascimentale style that are still there in another in the same deposit so i i thought to myself this is a sign we found the frame even if they're not uh, uh, Napoleon, if not the original frames, like uh, because here you will see also the Palla de Decembri uh, that has the Napoleon frame here up here in the in the same aquarelle. And if you go uh, back, you see the frame we have is a very goldish and simple frame. Yeah. But the original frame is a beautiful frame by Cecco di Bastone. So we don't know exactly what the Transfigurazione and, uh, and the other frame had, uh, but we are sure that uh, from, from uh, Foligno and from, uh, from um, Perugia, uh, the frame by, Na by the French were made and probably a, in, in the Vatican, when they got back in 1816, they they made or they regold some some of um, of the of the the French frames, or for sure the Transfigurazione was done in 1930 by the documents. Wow, this is what what a great discovery! <laughs> see, That's see, wonderful. but I, I'm I'm always joking, saying that probably next director will will take off the frame again and. <laughs> And use maybe the 1930s that are really ugly. I, I, I must confess, but it's a question of taste. I thought it was nicer to have like like a show exactly here, before and after. I I I, so I think it's much more nice to have them framed that without frame and with a new light. Oh yes, it's better than without. So Stephanie Leone, my colleague, I know has a question. Barbara, thank you so much for that mm -hmm. lecture. It's great to get this news from the Vatican and from you. Um, and I would say that Raphael's productivity is only matched by your productivity in all of the songs <laughs> no, no. for him. <laughs> but I'm I lucky thinking... because I had Raphael before, <laughs> 500 years ago. <laughs> right, and you must have been busy since the, you know since you began as the director exactly. there. Of exactly. course, you were there before that. But I'm, I'm, I have a question that I think might be interesting for our students who are in Nancy's class and also other of our students who are interested in the museum world and working in museums. And so you're working, you're the director of one of the 
um, one of the museums that has the most objects, such a rich variety of objects, so many um, different types from different time periods. And so other than an event like this, the anniversary of an artist, where it's you know kind of obvious thing that you want to celebrate, how else do you prioritize? Because you probably can't do everything, even though you have a wonderful staff and a lot of resources, but how, how will you prioritize, let's say in the next um, five years? Allora, coronavirus and pandemia have changed all our programs. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, so priorities are, are very much related to, uh, to, to the actual situation. And so to um, major events, major exhibitions with loans are totally uh, canceled. We are working on the collections on, uh, on but this is really uh, something that all our colleagues of major museums have decided to do. So works on the collection and, and um, in some ways um, uh, evaluate what are our, our, our collections. And I must say the program is related to uh, some anniversaries, of course, uh, next year will be Dante anniversary, will be Canova. Mm -hmm. And so we, we try to follow, of course, uh, not only artistical uh, uh, moment, but also, also uh, religious uh, themes uh, related to, to uh, la uh, last year, we had uh, 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 an Amazonian exhibition in our uh, ethnological museum because Pope Francis decided to have a synod related to Amazonia, to the problem connected with the uh, with uh, with the climate uh, system problems and and the population of Amazonia, and so we have uh, uh, incredible and huge important uh, collection of Amazonia objects and so we we the exhibition was made for that in that uh, way we had an exhibition devoted to mother teresa di calcutta of for his canonization so we are following the artistical uh, celebration the uh, liturgical and uh, and religious uh, um, the religion feast and celebrations but also um, also the collection the restorations uh, a project uh, uh, proposed by by the different curators. There are different uh, uh, fifteen different uh, museums, and so I have fifteen different curators uh, that are always pushing me with their projects <laughs> from uh, from uh, Egypt uh, to 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 ethnological to mm -hmm. contemporary art. Uh, so um, so from from the Biennale, the, the contemporary art uh, uh, curator is pushing me to have a, another Biennale. We are not participating this year to the Biennale because of many, many reasons, but uh, but she's pushing uh, to, to do that uh, and uh, and many, many others. So the inputs are, com are coming from the different curators and, and the sharing of ideas is put together. And is um, of course uh, related with the uh, with the budget and related to many many other reasons. But the coronavirus really rescheduled the entire the entire five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for sharing those insights. Mm -hmm. Really fascinating. And Barbara, I have one more question um, that uh, relates really to um, to the class, and and my students will. Um, Will uh, this will resonate with them? Um, we know that the that the Vatican had actually quite a small collection of paintings, maybe about three hundred paintings, I think, mm -hmm. before Napoleon. And then afterwards, I didn't quite realize until you spoke today that they got lots more stuff in their Pinacoteca. Do you have any sense of of how much more they got back than they lost? Um, lost temporarily, I would say. Yeah. No, no. Um, what honestly I must tell you that, of course, we are, we we hold to Napoleon uh, the Caravaggio, the Raphael, the Perugin, yeah. and many, many other Baroque, uh, the Domenichino, and others. So, of course, of course, uh, we we oh, and we are very. Mm, 
thankful to to Napoleon, but but the the time by Napoleon was was such a tough time for the papacy. Uh, we hold in the fact of the restoration time a wonderful space in the Vatican Museum that is the Braccio Nuovo of the Museo Chiaramonti that was conceived by by. Uh, by Canova and Raphael Stern, and it's an Im incredible uh, space of, uh, of, uh, of museum space, and, and, and we, we have it specifically because uh, Pius VII really uh, wanted to restore not only the papal power, but the, the, the papal uh, uh, collectionship, uh, the papal patronage, the papal uh, as, as patron of, of the antiquity in a wide sense, uh, uh, antique uh, as a model. And, and so, so in some ways, of course, we, we did receive a lot from, uh, from, um, from a, a, a tough time. And, uh, and this is a way of being, even we receive a lot uh, uh, as, uh, as papal collections and papal museums after uh, 1870, which was even much worse uh, than the, the Napoleon time, because uh, uh, Rome and the entire central part of Italy was uh, papal uh, possessions and papal uh, government and papal uh, cities and, and land and, and, and everything. And uh, of course, uh, we have in this funny situation that the major, apart the major basilicas that uh, are depending uh, in terms of art from, from the Vatican Museums and from, from our superintendenza, but the major um, churches in Rome and in Italy, in, in central Italy, are depending uh, from the superintendenza. And of course, they were conceived and they were thought. And so, <laughs> so the balance is like that. But what I must confess that uh, uh, my attitude is to turn in a tough time into a positive time. So I see, I, I try to see even of the, the present moment we are living, the, the, good, the good way. We have more time, we have more time to, to, to think, we have more time to study, we have more time to, uh, to even to restore if you want. Uh, we have less people, which of course is a, is a problem for a museum. The mission of a museum is to share, and so having less people is fine. But probably the, nowadays the the sharing is much nicer for for who is coming to visit us. So we have more time to to implement our website, and and if you uh, if uh, the people that are following us tonight are having a look to our website, it's much nicer than than it was uh, uh, by March uh, by last March so because a lot a lot of, uh, of our restorers are, uh, have been working by the lockdown town only in the relazioni that have been put into our website and many many more informations are in our website so so turning turning a tough time into a positive uh, situation this is my my philosophy, but is the philosophy of the papacy <laughs> of the Vatican in, in a wide sense. Well, that's 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 close to um, you. You've started to answer this final question that we have from one of the students in the class, uh, Peyton Wilson, who um, first says this has been fantastic, all in capital letters, and she just wants to know what your vision is for the museum going forward? You've already answered that um, in part. Do <laughs> you have anything you want to add to that? Sure. Um, of course, we have to rethink of the, uh, the, of, uh, the museum, uh, the global museum specifically. Uh, I consider our museum a, a global museum like other, like the Med, like the um, uh, Louvre, the, the Hermitage and others. but. Um, of course, I always consider our Vatican museums a specific museum uh, because it's also devoted to to the um, transmission and to uh, of, of the faith of the our our faith and our uh, specific culture. But not only that, uh, Pope Francis is asking us not to be only um, in some ways vehicle of our faith, but of of spiritual wa values on the white sense. That's why. Our um, ethnological uh, museum is so so loved, beloved by by our present pope. Uh, 
So my vision is uh, to re, re, rethink of uh, the museum of a place of, of course, of, uh, of, uh, of knowledge of uh, beauty and, uh, and uh, uh, of course, I would like I would like to more and more to share this in in presence and in uh, in uh, in digital way. Of course, I am always saying, and I don't I know that I don't have to say that now that we are in a digital uh, webinar. But uh, but the the real vision will never be substituted from from a, a, a virtual tour. Uh, but uh, by by uh, in a tough time, of course, that can help a lot. We we put a lot of our uh, online and visual tours uh, uh, on our website during the pandemic time, and they were very very helpful for 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 the the, the soul and the spirit of our visitors, of virtual visitors. So. Uh, la bellezza salverà il mondo. This I'm sure that, of course, beauty will will uh, will help. And and so the the vision of uh, of uh, of the museum of the future will be to keep going in in sharing the beauty, sharing the history, sharing the faith, uh, uh, and sharing in in the in the ways uh, we can we can do it. Uh, it depends on, on where we will be, but we will be there. <laughs> In some ways, we will be there with Caparbieta. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful way to end this uh, mm -hmm. blended hour and 15 minutes that you've given us. Um, we know how busy you are. We thank you. No, no, it's and, a pleasure. Um, it was an absolutely spectacular lecture. And um, so uh, we applaud you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you again soon, we hope. Okay, okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.